Hey everyone, just want to stop by real quick for this podcast. Stars and say, she like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to follow me on all my social medias at John D. Clouser, literally the same name as the name that you subscribe to on this YouTube channel. So enjoy this clip, and I'll see you guys on the other side. The answer is no, we don't get it on. Um, our relationship, like I said before, many times is not sexual. We love each other. We care for each other. I did try to kiss her once or twice. I'm not even going to lie to you. But, you know. Welcome to The John Show with your host, John Doogie Clouser. Alright, alright, alright. What's going on everyone? How are you? We are here on a new episode of the Juan Solo Show with your host, me, Juan D. Clouser. What is going on? You can see I, uh, right before this podcast started, I, uh, cut, I don't know what I did. I don't think I cut my finger. I just, I looked down and I felt like this wetness and I saw blood was coming down. I'm like, oh, well, that looks like blood. And so I'm like, I, I should probably, um, probably put a bandaid on it. And so this is where we're at. I just saw there's like a little bit of a nick and it was just like just enough that it just caused some sort of uh, some sort of bleed. So I hope you guys are doing better than I am right now. Uh, so we're here on a beautiful what what day is this? This is uh, October 18th about what is it? 10 10 at night we're doing this podcast. Uh, how much how uh, how how <laughs> I, I enjoy I like this the, I like this jacket but I you probably no one's ever seen me in something like this because but it's like yeah I, so every once in a while you'll do some corporate gig and they'll give you a swag bag something I recommend don't ever take the swag bag or what you do is you take the swag bag out of just respect out of niceness and you, you look through it real quick you take what you want you throw everything else away don't take them don't keep them because what's gonna happen is happens every time every time there's gonna be one thing that's gonna be halfway decent right halfway decent and you're gonna be like oh this is so cool and so you'll take that you'll use it somewhat you use it somewhat and then what will happen is the rest of the stuff just sits in the corner for I don't know damn near a year until you're cleaning and you're just like why do I still have this this is from that gig that I did like almost over a year ago like there's no need to have this anymore have this anymore so but yeah we're here uh Hope you guys are doing well. Um, yeah, today was fucking cold, dude. Missouri's like it's uh it's getting close to winter time. It's funny is like normally what happens is it's usually like thing uh not Thanksgiving, uh Halloween happens so like the thirty first of October, and then it's usually like November first. That's when it starts getting like it just like drops. So it's kind of funny how it's like about a couple weeks early. We're going through like a little bit of a cold spell right now. It's so interesting, right? Uh, it should be hot by the end of this weekend. You know what they say in Missouri? This is one of the dumbest things you'll ever hear from someone from Missouri. It's like, you know, if you don't like the weather, <laughs> just wait 30 minutes. It's like, no, no, just don't do No, okay. But they probably say that in Oklahoma. They probably say it in Kansas. Uh, oh, God forbid they, they know. We all know they say that in, in Nebraska. Like, it's just it's this part of Nebraska. Uh, it's, yeah, it's fucking hilarious. Of my, uh. My white sister. I, I, so I have like, I love saying, there's like funny things I love saying. I love saying I have two dads. Uh, one of the great things when you're adopted, you can say things like that. You'll be able to say like, oh yeah, I have two dads. And then immediately I say like, but they're not gay. And so it's the, one of the greatest like things to say. And then you throw this little side curve into it and people are like, huh? And you're like, what? And like, and, and we live in a society right now that we can't be you can't be judgmental and you can't you, you just don't ask anything about you just kind of like okay that's cool that makes sense and you just move on with it and they just have a regular conversation with me uh always wondering what did i mean by the fact that i have two dads and they're not gay because i would be like if, well, think about it what, if, what you're having a conversation with someone and they just say that to you like huh like huh it's like i'm still stuck way back here buddy like i know we're talking about you know sushi and if Taiwan is actually a real country, uh, <clears throat> I love saying that. One of the funniest things I because no one at my job understands any of that stuff. No one understands that at all. I'm always like, you know, we're a one, we're a one, we're a one China nation right here. 
we all believe in that. And I was like, what? It's like, yeah, like, you don't believe Taiwan's an actual country. Like, what? It's like, how Taiwan? Like, yeah, like, how do you guys not know this stuff? Like, this, like, or maybe I'm dumb for not for knowing this stuff uh, more than I probably should. Like, I, it's like I try so hard. As soon as football season hits, that's it. That's all I'm thinking about. That's all I am worried about. That's all I talk about. That's all I think about. That's all I want to be aware of. Like, you know, like today. Kansas City Chiefs, they have a they have a tight end. If you're not familiar with football, if you're not that familiar, they have this player, very good player. He's had like I, I believe six consistent seasons where he's had over a thousand yards receiving for a tight end. That's ridiculous. Like the next highest guy, I believe, is three. Like Shane and like, I think Shannon Sharp had two. He was no, he maybe he had three. He was maybe like six yards short of having four. It's just like. It's just not. It's not. It's not heard of as a tight end because the tight end is mostly is known in football because football used to be such a running league where the tight end was. You wanted a tight end who was big, uh, and you didn't really worry about. He might catch a ball here and there. That'd be like in a red zone situation. Red zone is in within the twenty yard line to the goal line. That's the red zone, and maybe catch a ball there, but that'd be about it. The really the point of a tight end was basically just a a big receiver who could block a really big receiver who could block. So there's a bug. There is a bug uh, in my light. I feel like I should kill it. You guys want to see me kill it on camera? Just eating up valuable time. I, I probably lost everyone there. Well, anyway, so oh, they have this. They have this guy. So this year, what they did was they they what they did. They just switched up his contract where they had it where uh, he's getting a signing bonus. So he's getting three point, I think three point four something like that million dollars as a signing bonus versus him having that in his contract. So what it does is it. it it frees up cap space so then they can go and spend money on another player. So that's the only reason why you do something like that. Well, I'd rather be more interested in that than versus like talking about any of the, you know, like if China, like the, like the, the Russian stuff, that's just, it freaks the shit out of me. It, it freaks me out because it's like, wow, we're really close. And if there is another world war, most likely what it's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be a nuclear war. Like it's not a, it's not going to be any of this ground troop shit, none of that. And then you see the fact that like the United States aren't like the uh, the military hit was like twenty twenty five percent below its uh no it kind of wasn't that low was it twenty maybe it was like twenty three percent below its target hit of like uh volunteers or people who sign up for the military. So it's like, what the fuck? Like, it's like, it's like this, this, this stuff's crazy to talk about. I don't want to talk about that. I don't like as much as I, I should know about that. And I should like, as an American citizen who doesn't vote, uh, want to talk about this. Like, you know, it's like, wh why would you like, like, you know, you should be talking, you should be reading about this. And like, whenever I do, I, then I just sit there because I, no one else I know around me knows about this as much as I do. And then they're just like, well. I don't know what you're talking about, and so I just have to sit there by myself, just thinking about this by myself. And that's like the worst thing you can do. That's the worst thing to do because when you do that, then you just like, you you just build this whole whole thing up in your head, and you're just like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, and like because you you don't have anyone to bounce ideas off of, and you're like, hey John, that that idea, as crazy as it might seem, not not can happen, won't happen, but. It's one of those things. So I was like, oh, oh, oh. But uh, so talking about my work, uh, I uh, I had our work jobs. I had a presentation I had to do. And so there was seven guys, one lady, uh, all suit and tie people, all suit and tie people. So I do my presentation. 
I feel like it do, it goes over splendid. No big deal. No big problems. And so I'm like, you know, I, I leave it up to people to ask some questions. <clears throat> and one of the guys, and I, you know, I felt like I built up enough rapport with these people where I could make, you know, any kind of joke with them. And they would, there would be a sense of uh, the room would understand that, oh, we are all just joking. We're all laughing because we're all making, we're about to make art here. We're about, we're all, we're all coming together to make this art thing. We just have to get this approved. And once it's approved, then we're all good to go. Right? So one of the guys, <laughs> one of the gentlemen, one of the suit and ties was like, so I, I noticed in the presentation, there was nothing about condiments. And I was like, Oh, I don't, I don't wear those. You, you don't feel anything. And that was just, I was, I said that because it was, I thought it was, you know, witty, funny, childish very low hanging but it was condiments condoms you know it's a joke we're all we're, we're all uh, we're all fun in the gang here and the guy's like what and i was like huh and he's like uh so john whatever you do in your personal life is none of our business and i'm like of course of course and i'm like wow i've never had a joke bomb so bad granite granite figured it was okay because we were we were in a room about talking about making art so i thought that it was okay i thought that maybe you know there's no need to there's no need to be uptight about this even though you're wearing a suit and tie i'm just sitting here wearing you know a t-shirt and jeans and you know no big deal like no you know artist guy with the money you know artist guy with the money no big deal and he was just like nope 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 not good at all. It was not a good idea. I do not recommend doing that, but it was funny. It was worth it. It totally was worth it. Totally was worth it. Totally. I, I would do it again. If if I had to go back in time and do it, I would do it. Yeah, I'd do that again. That was fucking great. To me, that was hilarious, and it was well-timed. It was perfect. So, to me, to this week, this beer's for me. And the goddamn bug is back. He's back with a vengeance, too. <laughs> He's just flying around like a fucking dipshit. I don't know what it is. Probably a fly. It probably is just a stupid ass fly. Which is funny because it's like, I feel like it's too cold for the flies to be around still. So, you know, it is, it is what it is. Uh, so I have that situation. Um, but talking about art, I guess. So I have a new movie that I'm working on. Uh, script done everything like that just got a cast there's a few things so like i was just kind of curious so in the script it's there's a, there's a, there's like a wolf quote unquote but i was really the whole the whole time what i was going to do is i was going to use use sound uh sound and use the camera and like positioning and that's going to be like a pov of a wolf all that kind of thing it's it's no big deal it's a three minute movie it's a three minute short film so I, you don't need you don't need a lot. You don't need to be crazy about it because like, it's actually less, the less you see and the less you are about it, the more interesting I think it would be. So anyway, uh, I, I just had a wild hair up my asshole, right? And I was thinking, okay, John, we, we should just like Google and see if we can actually get a wolf on set in Missouri. Let's see if we can do this. So I Googled it. Interesting. So I did find a place. I did find a thing. Uh, you can get a wolf with insurance, with insurance, with insurance, everyone. 77K, not that bad. Totally was expecting more, but that is for a Hollywood movie. That wouldn't be that bad. It would be expensive. Yeah, I'd be like, but if it's a big part of the movie, it, it, you know, it's worth it. But for a movie that's only three minutes long, it's kind of stupid to do. But still, still kind of cool to know. Still kind of cool to know. <laughs> But yeah, it's an interesting time. So yeah, right now I'm working on like two stories, uh, a script, um, basically getting ready, doing short films, getting ready for the one in uh, December, which is going to be the, uh, I guess you could say that a crim and a crim. It's going to be just like something that I'm just, I really want to land well on, so I figured the best way of doing that is just practice, practice, practice. And which is also really interesting today. Like I, I ran across like, like this actor, I saw this actor and I was like, 
Why you look so fucking familiar? Like I've worked with you before, and come to find it, like I worked with him like ten years ago, ten almost eleven years ago, in uh, Los Angeles. So I was like, I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, and then I'm like, what? Well, it wasn't that long. I mean, I mean, that was when I worked with him. It was like one of the very first things I ever did. I worked on this Doritos Super Bowl commercial. Uh, that was fun. That was, and like I met the actor, and like him and I worked for years. And actually, to tell you the truth, like he's probably one of the guys who gave me, uh, he gave me like one of my big breaks at the moment because he was doing stuff and he, he had like a small part on uh, like a recurring role on um, what show was that? Uh, Always Sunny in Philadelphia. And so like he has a decent amount of credit, but he had enough money where he was able to kind of just make these little short little films. And so I, I just was like, hey, I what I did with all the time back then when I when I first started making short or when I was getting in the industry, what I would do is like, you know, at the end of shoots, I'd go up to everyone. I'm like, hey, you know, my name is John. You know, like, it was so much fun to work with you. Uh, you know, here's my phone number. If you ever need anything, like, please, like. I would love to like help. I'm not asking for any money. That's always the big thing. I'm like, I'm like, I'm not asking for any money. I just want to get experience. I just want to work on your sh- stuff, help you out because it's like, you know, like you're scratching my back by me being able to like make art and then like you're be able to make your art by having people helping you make your art. So it was one of those things. And so him and I just worked together for so many shoots and he, it, it was so funny because he would always pay me. He's like, he was like, he's like, I can't pay you a lot, but like, here's some money. You know, be a hundred dollars here, one fifty, two hundred, you know, whatever. And one day he came up to me. He's like, "Hey, John." He's like, "My camera guy didn't show up. Like, you want to be my camera guy?" I'm like, "He's like, you can do the camera shit, right?" I'm like, "Yeah, I can do that. It's cool." And then I just be- I started becoming his camera guy. And it was just great. And you know, we worked together for so many years, it was so many fucking years. It's like, oh god, it was great. Um, yeah. And then like I moved away, and then he started doing his own stuff. I don't know. He's uh, he makes his own movies now. Like, like feature film style was like kudos to him. Like it's, he's one of the guys I've, uh, he, one of the hardest working people I've ever met in my life has just gotten, he's worked with, he's worked with a lot of fucking people and it's just that he just like fucking just do, 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 do. But he's one of those guys. He makes his living by just doing little extra stuff here and there. Like you've seen him in this, you've seen him in that. You're like, Oh, that guy, I'm a like, yeah. like, and it's just one of those things. Like these are just, this is just a humble brag, but you know, this is just, you know, you meet people like El- as big as Hollywood is, as big as like it's still pretty close knit. Like not many people make film films. You know, like trying to make film films. And uh, not saying like, uh, anyway, I'm saying this. I'm, I'm sounding like a fucking cunt. So I do apologize. So, but it's just you know one of those things. It's just like if, so filmmaking. You know, one of those. Like, I don't know. I'm just like so dick deep in it right now, in uh film. That it's just that this is this is all that's on my mind, and this is like everything else is it's like football, film, football, film, football, film, and it's just these are this my mindset at right now. Um, but yeah, it's great. It's getting cold, which sucks, and it's gonna suck to film and to do some shit outside to film some shit outside. But granted, three minute short film won't be that bad. But it's gonna be I. I I the vision that I have for this little short little film is gonna be pretty awesome. Has a has a can't I'm not gonna tell you much, not much on this one, but it's it has a wolf or a wolf involved wolves, a pack of wolves, uh, a girl, a little girl, not little red riding hood. There's nothing like that. Um, a mom and a dad. So it's like it's it's cool. It's gonna be a cool little idea. I think it's a very interesting little idea. The fact that how I can shoot it won't take that time as much as you say that it won't take that much time it's gonna take a lot of time there's never you can never make because if you want to make something that's decent it's going to take time it's just how it is this is how this is jed is just how it works you'll get very lucky sometimes you'll get lucky with a shot you might get the the shot that you want the first time second time uh but besides that like it's there's never easy this this stuff's not easy at all like filmmaking is is you're making magic because you're you're just taking still pictures and making it to adding sound and like, and just that's what you're doing. You're just making, you're taking still frames and making it to a moving thing, to a moving picture. So it's just great. Mind blowing. Crazy though. Uh, yeah. So if you can tell, like I'm just like amped. 
Uh, I drank a monster before this podcast. Uh, hitting now. Hitting now. Usually it doesn't hit. Usually I usually let it taper down a little bit before I really get on the podcast. But it is what it is. Um, I'm just like, fuck. Uh, but yeah, that's like really the only big thing stuff. The big stuff. What, what else do I have? What else do I have to talk about? Um, I have told the joke. Uh, do, 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 do. This is so unprofessional, isn't it? Uh, do, 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 do. Some girls were really cum people. Uh, that was that was a legit like one of my things I wrote on my thing. Uh, do 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 newest film. Yeah. Like I don't know, like all the dumb. St- I just have like dumb shit to talk about now. Like it's not even really like. Oh, the Penn State story. So, I uh, I. I I have told many of times I I grew up very lucky I've I had really a lot of opportunities in my life and after getting adopted and uh, but one of the things I never did which I very strongly regret uh, but that's just because you can't you can only regret it to a point that's not a perfect deal to me uh, well I've moved on I've grown from it but I feel like I I uh, half asked high school uh, I still half asked it and still. It still graduated decently, you know. I still graduate, you know. I still graduated with ribbons and honors and all that shit. But it's like, I still, I, I, I half-assed it. Uh, you know, I, I went to Boy State. It's one of the hardest. Like, it's an a prestigious thing to go to. Uh, I, you know, I went to a great college. I, I I've done all these things, and um, was so. But what's so funny was that there was uh, a chance where. Uh, Penn State. I don't know if you guys are familiar. Penn State. They were talking to me. They 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 talked to me. They're hey, you know, like w- w- we realize that, you know, your 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 grades are not that great because I I didn't care about my schooling. I didn't. But I, I did good. I did well at the tests, and I uh I I I had achievements where that it looked that made it seem like okay, he's not a full dumbass. He if he applied himself, he could be decent. Um. But I was at, I was like, you know, I went there and I looked at the campus and I was like, okay, this is decent. It's out in the fucking middle of nowhere. I was like, nah. I, same thing with like Texas Lutheran. I went to Texas Lutheran. And I looked, there was like a division three school to play football. And I was like, I, I went to the campus. I was like, I'm like, campus is nice. It was a really nice campus. It was out in the fucking middle of nowhere. I'm like, I don't want to go to a school out in the middle of goddamn nowhere. But. This is the one thing I will I will tell you, uh, if if anybody who is in high school, anybody who's young, who's maybe might be watching this, who plays football, I went to this D- Division three school. I looked at it, and you know, you go through your whole tour of like the campus, university. They take you through the, like the locker room, like the facilities of the the football program, and you're just like, you know, you get introduced to all these all fucking guys and you're just like to me i was always like oh my god i can't believe i'm even getting this like this is so fucking crazy that i i'm even getting this opportunity to to look at the the school or the school like contacted me and like set up this invitation to have me come and look at this like this is fucking crazy and i i they were like you know like yeah we have the packers the bears the 49ers come and look at some of the players like some of the dbs and like these are all the dbs over there and like those are the guys i was gonna be playing with and i looked at it and i'm like i'm like oh i'm like if i just i'm like if i apply myself a little bit more hit the weight room i'm like i can be better than all these guys i'm like they're not the biggest guys in the world and that's when i realized it's like it, it, like one, 50% of the NFL is non-drafted and they play. So like it, it's weird in that sense and like it's hard to get on the team, but like to be able to even like get the chance to even try out for a team is crazy all that stuff because like, you have so many opportunities because there's so many inner injur- injuries in the sport. But I was like, oh man, if I really did apply myself because that, that was the whole idea was that I would go to like you know a division two, division three, Maybe at NAI school if it was like a really good NAI school, and I would do two years, get my gen eds done, and then I'd transfer to a 
like a D one school and just walk on. And I'm like, I'm like, fuck it, dude. Like, I'm like, again, like I'm like, fifty percent of the team fucking makes it. Like, or is walk like you know? Like, I'm like, that was my mindset. I'm like, you know, if I can just get there, and I can like, sure, I could, I know I could possibly just get on the. I know I get on the roster. I know I can. Crazy, crazy, but the, the, half of half of any of this stuff is like just having the mindset of like, well, like there's no no not doing it you just do it you just you wake up every day you train you eat well you you know catch some passes you do some routes you do your things that you have to do to get better and you just do it there's nothing there's nothing else you can do you just do it or you don't there's no middle ground because there because you can't have any middle ground with it you just got to do it and you have to have a routine you could and, and that's what and that's probably one of the biggest things that irritates the shit on me with like a lot of people is that there's no sense of like pride. Uh, there's no sense of like having like a goal because the goal for me was like, you know, make this team be the best team, be an all state, be all, all conference, be all district, be all anything to then eventually get an opportunity to go move on to another location and play for another team. And so, and so, like, that was always the goal. So everything I did was for that thing. So you that means, like, you couldn't cheat on, like, this step over here because it's going to fuck up this step over here. It, this is this is what it was. There, There is no understanding of, like, failure because you have to just f- do it. And if you just do it and give yourself the best opportunity to do it, then, like, then I, I can live with myself if I fucking don't make it then because I, I, I literally took every fucking way it's gonna hurt it's gonna hurt really bad not making it or whatever but the thing is like i put myself in the situation versus like being like well i could have done this i could have done that no you can't have that so that instilled the mindset of like this is the dude i'm gonna be i'm gonna have to fucking just work really hard to become that but uh I have two things left. Like so, anyway, so I I went to like Penn State and like you know, hey, like we we were considering like, um, but it wasn't even football. They were looking at me for rowing. They're like, you know, like Nate, you could possibly like walk on the rowing team. And I'm like, at that time, I was like, maybe. I'm like, because it'd be a lot less injury to the body. But I'm like, you don't get much, there's not much scholarship money in rowing. It's more of like the saying the fact that you were, you were on the rowing team at Penn. That was really my that was really the thing. I'm like, but I'm like, I don't want that and the fact that I'm like you know Penn State is connected with you know Sandusky who you know molested all those kids and or was like even in showers with the kids and was like doing stuff and I, and I know it was like eight and but it was the fact that like Joe Paterno also knew about alleged things and didn't do anything about it it was the whole thing just gross to me so I was like I don't want to be part of that at all and they're like well maybe you're just not pin material and I'm like well maybe I'll just instead of walking on here I'll just walk on off and do other things and they're like well all right and I'm like all right and it was like it was just like like, no I don't want to do this at all like and it might have been different I no, I couldn't I don't think I would even be able to do it if they would even offered me a scholarship but it was just the fact that, like, because uh, they're like, the guy was like so impressed the fact that I went to Boy State. He's like, You went to Boy State too? And I'm like, Yeah, I went to Boy State. He's like, That's such a prestigious thing. I'm like, I, I, I didn't realize how prestigious it was until I got to college and like you met other people who did it in their state. And you're like, Oh, this stuff is like, Oh, this is kind of a big deal that you, you're able to do. You did this. Uh, apparently, this was a big thing. Apparently, this was a huge thing. And it was so funny. Like, I just, I went in and I smoked a bunch of pot. That's all I did. I smoked pot and I went to like the lectures and I kind of just sat there and I was like wore a suit and tie and I'm just like this is kind of stupid, but it is it, it 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 is what it is though, right? Uh, so I got like 48 seconds left. So if you got this far, thank you. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, I'm like feel like I'm losing my voice. Um, but I'll see you guys on the next episode. Be safe. Get a hobby. Do something good. Have fun. Uh, wear a jacket. It's gold. Wash your hands because that needs to be a thing now because, uh, well, it should always be a thing, but cold season. Uh, so, yeah. I will see you guys later. Bye. Chug, 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 chug.